Hi, it's Jason Gorman here from Codemanship with the second of today's screencasts, which is about design by contract, which you may be familiar with as a, as a technique. Let me just quickly um, give a brief overview of design by contract. Um, so this is a, a way of specifying and implementing um, objects such that when objects, uh, methods or services are invoked, um, certain rules are enforced uh, um, about those methods to ensure that they work correctly. And there are, there are two kind of rules that we're primarily concerned with and also a third kind of rule that we're going to touch on briefly. So the two kinds of rules that we're interested in when we use methods um, are called preconditions and postconditions. A postcondition describes what should be true about the object when that um, method has um, executed successfully. A precondition describes the circumstances under which that method can be invoked and expect to be executed, ex um, executed successfully. So for example we have account class here and in terms of pre and post conditions the debit methods post condition is that the amount that we're debiting should be deducted from the balance of the account. That's the benefit of using the debit method. But that's only true if the amount is not greater than the available funds in the account. So the amount has to be less than or equal to the balance. So when we invoke the debit method, a precondition of invoking debit is that the amount we're debiting is less than or equal to the balance. There's a third kind of rule that we may be interested in, which is called an invariant. And this applies to every instance of the object at any point after or before its methods are invoked. So these are rules, these are rules that must always be true effectively. For example, the balance can never have a balance of an account can never be less than zero. Now, when we practiced um, design by contract in the past, traditionally what we did when we implemented these contracts, these rules, um, was that we embedded assertions inside the code itself. So we would write an assertion at the beginning of the debit method just to check that the amount was not greater than the available balance. And we might um, also write assertions, although that's less common, we might write assertions at the end of the, um, the debit method, after the body of the method, just to check that the post conditions were satisfied. And if we're you know, going the whole hog, we might also write assertions for the account class that are checked um, both before and after the body of the debit method. Now, when we do test-driven development and unit testing, we approach things slightly differently. We can achieve similar aims. Um, we can achieve a sort of design by contract, but using unit testing instead of embedding the, the assertions. So let's look at a Java example that I quickly knocked up. So we have our accounts class, and we have a test for it here um, about debiting um, the amount from the balance. Sorry, debiting the amount from the account. And... Um, our post condition, the finishing balance, if you like, um, is, is as you would expect it to be. It's a test assertion, basically. Um, so we can use test assertions to assert post conditions about what should be true after a method has been invoked. Um, so that's easy enough. But what about preconditions? Well, preconditions are rules that really apply to clients using the debit method. So these aren't rules about an account. These are rules about classes that use account and in particular use the debit method, call the debit method. So we have a funds transfer test class here and I've written a test that creates two mocks, a payer and a payee um, and then I've hard coded, hard baked a balance on the payer of 100 and I'm going to try and transfer 110. So the precondition here has been broken, the amount is greater than the available balance on the payer's account. Now when I execute this, what should happen is that the debit method and the credit method should not be called under these circumstances. And also we flag up the error. Um, so when I run the test, it fails because I've set an expectation that these methods will never be called under these circumstances. But they are actually being called. So what I can do to pass this test... is to add a check in the client code that calls debit and credit in this case that the balance is greater than the amount. 
And if that's the case, we, we proceed with the transfer as planned. Otherwise, um, we flag up the error. So now when I run it, the test passes because the expectation has been satisfied that this method, debit, will not be invoked if the precondition is broken. Now what about invariants? Well, arguably the invariant for the account class, which is that the balance must always be greater than or equal to zero, um, that um, invariant rule is kind of implied in the precondition of the debit method. The reason we have that precondition is because of this invariant rule. Um, so I probably wouldn't explicitly test it in this case. But if you did want to test preconditions, um, when and where would you do it using uh, something like JUnit? Well, what we could do is in our account tests class, we could create a method that is executed after every test. And um, balance should never be less than zero. For example, in this case, we only have one invariant, so that's a good name for the method. And we can create a test assertion. like so and then whenever we run our tests that assertion will always be made um, just to check that it's a meaningful test I'm going to swap over these amounts so we now have a balance of 50 and we're going to debit 100 and we're going to expect now this is obviously not a meaningful test because this should never happen but I just want to check that our invariant test assertion will fail when we run that test. So that's a way for um, enforcing invariants or testing for invariants um, in unit tests. Um, and that's a way of achieving a kind of design by contract, achieving many of the aims of design by contract, but doing it in a way that's uh, more conducive, more, more amenable to test-driven development and to unit testing in the sense that we know it.